If you only watched cable news, what would you think about the nationwide protests following the killing of George Floyd? The words commonly used on national news can provide us with a look at how the media frames a story. How often they say words like protesters, looting, or riots can highlight which aspects of a movement the media is focused on. As you can see, perhaps unsurprisingly, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News have all mentioned protests quite a bit over the past couple weeks. But in addition, these channels have also focused on the violence and unrest taking place around the country. You're watching New Day, and it has been a painful night of violence and protest in Minneapolis. As we mentioned, the streets of Minneapolis got more violent as darkness fell tonight with police using non-lethal weapons. All right, a Fox News alert now. Violence escalating overnight in Minneapolis as rioters set the city's third precinct police station on fire in the wake of the death of George Flood. Violent protests raged for a second straight night following the death of George Floyd after being... So why does this matter? The media plays a key role in how the public perceives protests and movements such as Black Lives Matter, and can influence how these movements are viewed. Here's Dr. Danielle Kilgo, a professor at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Her research focuses on how the media covers social justice issues and protests. Some protests have trouble um, getting legitimacy uh, and finding legitimate coverage more than others. A lot of times um, this is because there is an overemphasis on the actions that are happening in the protests, what they're, what they're doing out in the streets, and there's just less of an emphasis on the demands and the grievances and the agendas and the reasons why they're there. We have watched as mobs of violent cretins have burned our cities defaced our monuments, beaten old women in the street, shot police officers, and stolen everything in sight. The, the rioting, the looting, uh, let's, just, let's just go down the list and we will start with the images that we're looking at now. This is unacceptable. It's despicable behavior. It actually turns uh, a lot of Americans against the good cause. So uh, when the protests first happened and there was less discourse that was happening on social media between journalists and critics, um, a lot of the coverage was focusing on riots. It wasn't placing blame on other people, on other actors, on other institutions that um, help instigate some of the actions that protesters have to take. It was uh, an emphasis on violence and on their actions and on what they did as a unit and a group of people. If you come and swing this way, you see a parking lot on this side, this is where the Target and a grocery store, they were getting openly looted, people walking in and out, running out with items. These actions should not be happening, okay? Again, understand the anger, not the actions. This should not be happening. A police precinct should not be going up in flames. It just lacked the nuance that is needed to really give protesters a fair shake. And uh, there is a lot of emphasis on violence and uh, riot and um, you know, the, having to control or confront or arrest them or having to um, use tear gas and, you know, gates to keep them away. They, they were framed as very, very disruptive. And their demands were sort of reduced to this while George Floyd died. And much more happened than George Floyd's murder. There was much more to the story than that. And so we have had, you know, quite a few years that have had um, incidents just like George Floyd that haven't received them as much uh, public attention or media attention than we did before. We actually looked into this. We analyzed mentions of Black Lives Matter in both closed captioning data of cable news broadcast and in online news articles. You do see a decrease in mentions of Black Lives Matter on both mediums between 2017 and 2019, even though the number of incidents where police fatally shot Americans have remained relatively constant. You see an increase in the mentions back in 2014 following the protests in Ferguson when the police shot and killed Michael Brown. And before these recent protests, the largest spike in mentions of Black Lives Matter was in 2016, after a black gunman opened fire and killed five police officers during a peaceful demonstration in Dallas. One question many have now is, has there been a shift in how we are covering these protests? As you're looking at this data um, and you're, and you're you know, drawing your conclusions, I just, there, even though some people cover some topics more than other topics, all the media kind of works the same. <laughs> and so, you know, so some of my studies have focused on just Texas media, and some of them have focused on regional and metropolitan media in California. And some of them have used the New York Times, and, and the patterns really remain 
the same. And so there, there is an implicit and explicit bias question that all newsrooms have to ask. But I think there are some differences that I see. I think that, you know, we are seeing more attention to police behavior, which is always absent in <laughs> coverage from the past. Um, it is so absent that we rarely are able to ca account for it in our statistical models. So we, we reduce it to confrontation and arrest. Amid this dialogue, it is shocking to see images of police abusing their power. There has also been differ differentiation between protesters groups. So um, I think over time I've heard and uh, read several journalists note that there was a group of protesters here in the morning. They were peaceful. They went home. And then there's another group right now <laughs> that are challenging this curfew. And they're different. Many of the protesters that are angry over this death did remain peaceful. They will tell you that some of the, of the demonstrators decided to turn violent. But for the most part, the vast majority were peaceful protesters. You saw mothers, fathers. Um, you saw grandparents out there today. Um, as well as, in some cases, some children. And then later on in the evening, things change. Um, and while, you know, there's still more to be done, I do think they, there's, there's a lot of progress that has been made in the middle of this event about trying to understand what's going on. It remains to be seen how the public will view these protests in the end, and whether that reaction will result in any societal or political changes. At the moment, the public seems to at least understand why these protests are happening. In a recent Monmouth poll, 57% of respondents felt that, regardless of their actions, the protesters' anger was fully justified. However, in that same poll, only 17% agreed that the actions of the protesters were fully justified. Public support may be, at least in part, contingent on how the story of the movement is covered by the mainstream press.